Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the gravitational redshift that photons experience when they try to go away from a gravitational force. Again, we need to emphasize that photons do not have mass, but they do act like they do. And it turns out that the equivalent or the apparent mass of a photon can be expressed as the energy of the photon divided by c squared, c of course being the speed of light. And that can then be written as the Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon divided by c squared, or in terms of the wavelength, Planck's constant divided by the speed of light times the wavelength of the photon. Now imagine that there is an object right here at some distance away from the center of the Earth, and of course this would then be the distance to the center of the Earth r, big M is the mass of the Earth, small m is the mass of that object, and then we can say that the potential energy of this object is equal to minus the universal gravitational constant, the mass of the object, the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance away from the center of the Earth. Well, for a photon being in that particular location, let's say that's, an, that's a little photon right there, we now have the equivalent mass, so now we can say this is equal to minus g times the, perhaps apparent mass would be a better word, times the mass of the Earth divided by r. And we also know that the total energy of an object in space, energy total, is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And for a photon, the kinetic energy is the energy a photon has when it's free in space. That would be equal to h times the frequency. And then, of course, since the potential energy is negative, it would be minus g, the apparent mass of the photon, m over r. And if we now replace the apparent mass of the photon by what that is equal to, we can say this is equal to hf minus g m over r, and instead of the apparent mass of the photon, we're going to write hf over c squared, so times hf over c squared, which means that I have an hf here and an hf there, that the total energy of a photon can now be written as hf times 1 minus, and what's left then, we have g m over rc squared. So now we realize that when a photon is captured inside a gravitational field, like the Earth's gravitational field, the total energy will have that will be equal to hf, which is normally the energy of a photon, times 1 minus gm over r times c squared. Now let's calculate what this value is equal to for being, let's say, on the Earth's surface. If we get to the Earth's surface, let's take our photon now and place it right here above the Earth's surface, right there. We want to know what this, hmm, this quantity is equal to at that point. So let's go ahead and, and Calculate that, so at that location, gm over rc squared is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. m would be, that's the mass of the Earth, that would be 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, divided by r, the radius would be 6,378, with three more zeros, turn that into meters, times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 quantity squared. So let's see what that's equal to. 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24th divided by 6378000 and divided by 383 e to the 8 squared equals and I get 6.95, 6.95 times 10 to the minus 10. Now compare that to the number, where am I? To the number 1, so it's 1 minus this quantity, and notice that the very, very small number relative to the number 1. So it's extremely insignificant when we're talking about gravitational fields of planets, and so that's why we never really notice that or measure that. So in, in other words, the total energy of a photon on the surface of the Earth is approximately equal to hf, and basically, you know, uh, times 1 minus some very tiny number. It's a tiny number. So in other words, we can just simply 
ignore that for all intents and purposes. It's simply equal to h times f, and that's what we normally see. Now, what if the photon came from the sun? Now, the sun is a much bigger object, a much stronger gravitational force, and by the time that photon reaches, let's say, the Earth, it will have lost some of its energy, and that means that the frequency would have become a little smaller, and a smaller frequency means that the wavelength would have gotten a little longer, which means that it would have shifted to the red light of visible light, and that's what we call the redshift caused by the gravitational pull of the sun. And so let's work that out. So let's find the energy total. And what we can then say is, uh, let's say that the energy total by the time it gets to the Earth, for example, we can say that would be h times the new frequency. So instead of writing energy total, we're now going to say from the sun. So coming from the sun, the energy by the time the photon reaches us is now going to be h times f prime. That will be a, a smaller frequency, therefore a longer wavelength, because some of the energy will have been lost by getting away from the gravitational pull of the sun. So that's going to be equal to the original energy that it had when it left the sun, h times f, that would be the total energy at the surface of the sun, times 1 minus g m over r c squared, where in this case, r would be the distance from the sun to us, and m would be the mass of the sun. So let's see how that has changed and how much has the energy changed of the photon. So we can say that h f prime is equal to h f times 1 minus, and let's plug in some numbers here, that again 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times the mass of the sun, divided by the distance from the sun, which is 150 billion meters, and the speed of light squared. And let's see what that number then becomes. So we have hf prime equals hf times 1 minus, and let's see how much that would make a difference. 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 2 e to the 30th, divided by 150 e to the 9th, and divided by 3 e to the 8 squared equals, and it would be 9.88, 9.88 times 10 to the minus 9. So you may say, well, that's still a really small number, and you would be right, but it's not as small as the energy loss by photons that leave the Earth. Notice, to leave the Earth, you lose this much energy, or this much of a fraction of the energy. Of course, coming from the sun, you would lose quite a bit more the difference is almost a factor of 10. So the best thing to do then is to say, okay, the frequency, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by h, and then I'm going to say that f prime divided by f, so that would be the new frequency divided by the old frequency, and of course this will be a lower number compared to that, that will be equal to 1 minus, and in general we would say gm over rc squared, and of course in the case of the sun that would be 1 minus 9.88 times 10 to the minus 9. So you can see that some energy would be lost. This fraction will be smaller than 1 by a very tiny amount, but that means that if this is smaller than 1, this would be a smaller number, and therefore we have lost some of the energy, decrease in the frequency, and increase in the wavelength, and that's what's called gravitational redshift, because longer wavelengths means the light would have been shifted towards the red. That means all the photons coming from the sun, by the time they reach us, the gravitational pull of the sun will have reduced their energy, small amount, causing that small gravitational redshift to exist in the light that we get from the sun. Of course, the sun is a typical star, not unusually big. What would happen when photons try to leave much more denser objects that have a much greater gravitational pull. Well, for that, you'll have to stick around because we'll have some other videos showing you how to calculate that. And that's how it's done.